Well, before I do anything else, I want to look into the camera and say hi to everybody that's watching online. Come on, Heartland family. Help me welcome all of them to church today. Oh, come on. Help me welcome them to church today. <clears throat> so our flow's just going to be a little different today than it normally is. Uh, I want to say this up front. I don't apologize for that. Uh, because I really believe that this is the flow for our church right now. I know, I said this last week, but I know that God has spoke to me about this. Uh, and so we're just gonna flow in it. But a couple of things I, I gotta say, uh, just housekeeping wise. First of all, if this is your first time hanging out with us today, I want you to know how grateful we are to have you here in church with us. Come on, HC family, help me welcome them today. After this service, we've got Starbucks gift cards for you. Go out to uh, our Next Steps area and just say hi to them. And they have a gift they want to give you just to say thanks for hanging out. It'd be a real treat to get to know you a little bit better. Let me tell you about a couple of quick things really, really fast. Number one, tonight is our Dream Team Party, everybody. My favorite event we do all year long because I get to say thanks to all of our amazing Dream Teamers for all you do. And so far, of you, so far about 350 of our team members have registered for tonight. We're gonna have a great night, uh, lots of food. You're gonna laugh a lot. Uh, it's just, you're gonna you experience the gamut of all the emotions today. Uh, so it's just gonna be a, a great, great day and we're really excited to do it for you. So come at 6 p.m. Uh, and then I, I do wanna mention our Heartland Kids Vision Weekend that 17th and the 18th of September. Uh, if you serve in Heartland Kids or you're interested in serving in Heartland Kids, we just have some vision we wanna share with you. I'll be there. Uh, praying for you and praying for people and talking a little bit as well. And uh, it's just going to be a really important, a uh, great weekend. And then men's night, uh, where's all the men at in the room? Come on, men. <laughs> so stupid every time. <laughs> Friday, September 10th, uh, 7 p.m. Would love for you to register. Uh, it's going to be a great night. Uh, this is a night we've designed for you. It's a Friday night and uh, we're going to have lots of stuff going out in the lobby after an after party. Uh, including a golf simulator that I can't wait to beat some of your tails in. Uh, so uh, looking forward to that. And then this coming first Wednesday is what we're calling a prophetic night of impartation. It's gonna be a flow just kind of out of what we're doing today, but it will we'll go a little bit deeper than we do uh, there because it's our, it's our believer's service. Uh, and we have communion and we spend uh, a lot of time in worship. In fact, in some ways, it's gonna kind of look like this, but we're gonna do some different things that we're not gonna do this morning. Uh, so I'm really excited about that. Last thing I want to do before I jump into this, and I'm only going to teach about 20, 20 minutes or so, uh, but I, I would be remiss if I didn't honor my father-in-law who's here today uh, in town, and that's uh, Kendra's dad, uh, Pastor Leroy Kelly's in the room. Pastor Kelly, we love you today, so I really mean this. I have the best in-laws in the world, uh, <laughs> so... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> there you go. So uh, I'll take the 10 bucks after we get done. Uh, so, so last week, I, um, I, I just, I felt really led to share with you this idea that's been in my heart for 18 months now. Uh, I think it was, I think it was in very early January of uh, 2020. I was in Baton Rouge, spent four weeks in Baton Rouge during the week last year with a, a mentor uh, that was pouring into my life named Larry Stockstill. Uh, and Pastor Larry uh, spent a lot of time with me. Well, during that trip, I remember I was in my hotel room and I felt the Lord just speak to me and, and tell me, Dusty, I want Heartland to unleash and unlock uh, the prophetic in people's lives. And I told the Lord, uh, I don't really know what that means. Um, and so I really went on a journey to just ask the Lord, Lord, what are you asking me to do uh, with this. We don't do a lot of that uh, on the weekends. I've always felt like uh, that's a part of my ministry, but we typically don't do it in a lot of weekend services. I, I do it a lot on the road. I do it a lot at camps, uh, stuff like that. Uh, so I, I just been praying about this a lot and I've had this date circled on my calendar for a long time. And I've just, I've told God, God, you got to help me understand what this looks like because I want to do it in a way that makes sense. And I want to do it in a way where people uh, understand the flow of, of what this looks like in a healthy way. You guys have heard me say this many times. I feel like God has called me to redeem some of these things that people saw abuses on in their lives, 
uh, I, I just feel like, like I'm a teacher, uh, but not only am I a teacher, I feel like I'm an activator of it. And I just, so I just feel like a real push and a, and a call to do some of this stuff in a way that makes sense uh, to people who've either never been in that environment before or who were in it and like, are like, I'm not doing it. Uh, and the truth is, the truth is this, if I handed you a Bible and you knew nothing about Christianity and I told you, go in this room and I'm locking the door and don't come out until you've read the entire New Testament, you would come out of that room believing in miracles, that, that, that God does miracles. You'd, you'd believe in prophecy. You'd believe that of the supernatural. You'd believe in the gifts of the spirit because you see all those things in the Bible, yet people don't do them today because of all these things that they've seen or they've heard or that they've been taught. And none of that's biblical. So we gotta redeem what the Bible says and activate and do what the scripture's telling us to do. Amen? So here's where I wanna go today, all right? I wanna talk about this for a few minutes. Every person has a God-given dream that has been placed in them from the heart of God. Uh, another way to say this is, is that God has a dream for your life and you dream it because God put it there. Every person has a destination in, in mind. But, there, but there's something that you have to understand about God speaking. You see, there's some things that, that God speaks that are unconditional. Meaning it doesn't matter what you do or what you say, they're gonna take place. Zero percent of it relies on you. Zero dependence upon you. Whether you like it or not, Jesus is coming back one day. Amen, everybody? End of story. <laughs> Whether you're ready or not is happening, okay? But what we see in scripture is that there are other times where some of it is reliant on us. I'll show you a very popular scripture that a lot of people know, and you're gonna probably recognize it. Second Chronicles 7. If my people who are called by name will humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then I will hear from heaven, forgive their sin, and will hear their land. Well, we actually see this, this kind of thing happening throughout several chapters here in Second Chronicles where there's this if, state, if statement followed by a then statement. If you do this, then this will happen. If you do this, then this will happen. So there are some words that are authoritative, they're gonna happen. There are other words that are conditional and they're based purely upon your response. Now, since we're talking about prophecy and, and we're talking about how God uses prophecy in the New Testament church, I, I wanna use Joseph as an illustration for just a second, okay? Joseph was 17 years old when God gave him a dream. He was 17 years old when this dream came to him, this vision of what God was gonna do in his life. Everybody around him thought he was crazy for it. It didn't really ma even make sense totally to Joseph. But 17 years old, it's not until Joseph is 30 years old that he starts to live this out. Now, here's what I wanna talk about. I wanna talk about this, this tension. God gives him a prophetic word when he's 17. But Joseph actually had to go through what I call a prophetic testing in his life before that gift could come to pass. And what I want you to understand is that, that God's prophetic word that he speaks over your life is full of destiny and it's full of desire and he wants to move and he wants to do a great work in your life. But every person whom God gives a prophetic destiny will require them to go through a season of what I'm calling a prophetic testing. Okay. In fact, let me just ask this question. I asked it last week, but how many of you would say that at some point in your life, somewhere along the way, somebody has spoken a word over your life, whether it was prophetic or, or you thought it was in a service or something like that. Let's just see the hand. Just wave at me if you've ever had anybody do that in your life before. Okay, look, there's a lot of people. There's a lot of hands. Okay. But here's the thing about a word like that. Some people think that those kind of words are just, let me just wait for it. It's like pixie dust. It got sprinkled over me and, you know, I'm gonna, I can fly, I can fly, I can fly. But God's gonna require some things out of you. And if you receive a word like that and, and you walk away from God or you don't, you don't walk out the path that God has for you, you can't arrive at the destiny. In fact, I'm gonna say a really strong statement here. Some people won't ever fulfill the prophetic destinies that are on their life. And the reason is because their lives don't match up with God's word. So they have to line up. We talked about this last week. 
this verse in 1 Timothy 4. I want to read it. This, this is kind of setting up what we're doing today, okay? And, and so the Lord speaks to me about, you know, let's, let's do this prophetic stuff. Well, several months later, I, I read this verse one day, and it was like a lightning bolt went off inside of me for some reason. I read it last week. I want to read it again. It says, do not neglect the gift that is in you. So there's a gift that's in you, and the gift wasn't something you were born with. The gift was, come on, everybody, it was given to you. It was given to you by what? By prophecy with the laying on of the hands of the eldership, or another uh, translation uses the word presbytery, okay? So what I see from this verse is a few things. First of all, there are gifts that God has given you, but they have to be unlocked, There are gifts that are in you that God wants to use. There are gifts that he wants to do an amazing work in your life. But if you're never in an atmosphere where prophecy is is being unleashed and people are not laying hands on you, that's how some of these gifts are given. And you need the eldership. And I thought to myself, well, how could these gifts ever be given to some people if they're not in an environment where they receive this? And the Holy Spirit said, that's why I want you to unlock the prophetic. You know, it's kind of like speaking to me in that moment. But now watch the next part of this verse. And this is really interesting. It says this. So going back to it, you got the gift given to you by prophecy. There's this gift in you. All right, we're unlocking it. But now look at the next part. So give your complete attention to these matters. Throw yourself into your tasks so that everybody will see your progress. Keep a close watch on, come on, everybody say it, how you live. Because how you live matters, everybody. And on your teaching, everybody say these next two words. Stay true to what is right for the sake of your own salvation and the salvation of those who are going to hear you. In other words, there are some gifts, not every gift, but there are some gifts that you have to be faithful to them in order for those gifts to start to manifest in your life. In other words, The gift is unlocked, but now you have to begin to open the gift. I gave this illustration in the last service. Let me give it in this one. Let's say that I brought you up on the stage today and said, here, we're going to give you a brand new car. You'd be very happy, and I would hand you keys. Well, at that moment, you've actually not activated the gift that I've given you. You've received the gift. You may have the gift. But that gift is really useless in your hands until you take it, put it in the car, and punch that button, and the car turns on. Because you can have a gift, but not activate the gift. So we activate the gifts, we open the gifts that God gives us, and it requires that. So God has spoken a word over you. By the way, some of you didn't raise your hands. So has anybody ever spoken a word over you? And you're like, no, no one's ever done that. I want you to know, actually someone has. The Lord spoke over you when he formed you in your mother's womb. He spoke a prophetic destiny over your life. And there's been words that have been prophesied by the Lord over your life. So someone has spoken over you. And you might, so let's just use an example. You might say, or I might say as I'm prophesying over somebody, God, I'm just totally being generic here, but God, God's called you to be a fantastic teacher and a mom, and there's an entrepreneurial spirit on your life. Well, that prophetic word has to go through a prophetic testing. You have to go through it. Let me show you a scripture where, say, Dustin, that doesn't make any sense. I don't even know if that's in the Bible. Okay, fine. Let me show it to you in the Bible. All right? This is Psalms 105 talking about Joseph. Now, check this out. This this was amazing to me. It says, he sent a man before them, Joseph, who was sold as a slave. They hurt his feet with fetters. He was laid in irons. Until the time that his word came to pass, the word of the Lord tested him, is what the Bible says. Now, you have to remember this. In the Old Testament, sometimes there are Hebrew words that have many meanings But when it gets translated into the English, we don't have enough words for it to really describe fully what it is. So we have what we feel like at times is somewhat of an incomplete translation. And that happens here 
from the time that his word and the word, if you actually go and you study it, those two words, it jumps off the page because his word, that's Joseph's word, and the Lord's word, they're two totally different words. The first word is a very common Hebrew word in the Bible. It's mentioned 1,439 times. It's the word debar. And, and it means something spoken. So the spoken word, okay? So there was a spoken word over Joseph's life. The second word is the word imral. And it's used only 37 times in the Bible. It means the literal word of God, the authoritative, infallible word of God. So we would often use that word to describe like the scripture, or even in the Old Testament, they would use it to describe the Torah. It can, it can even translate that way. So if we're reading this verse, until the time that his word came to pass, the word tested him, if we sort of translate it using our basic English, this is kind of the basic way I would summarize it. Until the time his prophetic word came to pass, that's Joseph, the literal word of God tested him. In fact, let me just show this to you, what we just read, uh, in, in scripture so that you can see it. Now, I'm gonna show you this right here, the word of the Lord. I'm just gonna rapid fire some verses. The words of the Lord are pure words, like silver, tried in a furnace of earth. That's that authoritative word. As for God, his way is perfect. The authoritative word of the Lord is proven. Your word, the authoritative word, I have hidden in my heart that I might not sin against you. So in Joseph's life, until his prophetic word came to pass, the word was testing him. That, that's the, and, and so let me say it to you right now. Every single one of us in this, this room, the Bible is testing us. You're going through a test. It's testing your character. It, it's determining whether what is spoken over your life will actually come to pass. Now, I wanna go back and I wanna reread Psalm 105. Same verse I just read to you just a second ago. Now I wanna read it in the New Living Translation and look at the difference when you start to use the words not translated the same way. Until the time came to fulfill his dreams, the Lord tested Joseph's character. So here's the reason that prophecy is so important. Because here's what prophecy does. It tests, or, or, or prophecy builds our faith. It raises us up. Faith rises with prophecy. It's why people like being in prophetic services is because every single one of our faith gets built in a prophetic service. Yeah. You know, it's amazing. But the word of God is the thing that tests that faith. So the prophecy may build it, but a word from God tests the faith. It's tested with the written word, everybody. If faith is tested with prophecy, then character gets tested with the written word. So why teach this? Why am I even telling you all this? Some of you are like, I don't even understand what this means. What are we doing right now? Well, here's the reason I'm telling you this is because anytime we get in a prophetic flow as a church or, you know, we, we, we ask God, God, unleash or release prophetic words in our church. Anytime they come out of this house, there's gonna be a lot of temptations in your life. For some people, they get a word like that and the temptation's just like, okay, I'm, I'm just gonna wait on it. Or some people get discouraged. It's like, well, I've not seen that word come to pass in my own life. But what you have to realize is that every word has to go through prophetic testing. So there are words that God has already spoken over your life. There are words that prophetic destinies, you know, that have been spoken over your life. And, and Wednesday night at First Wednesday, uh, we're, we're going we're gonna to spend some time just giving prophetic words uh, at length. And I've asked the Lord, Lord, kind of prepare my heart and prepare some of our team, you know, for the opportunity to do this. So what, what do we need to do then with these words that God speaks over our destiny, a prophetic word. Well, we gotta do a few things with them. When it comes to pass in our life and when we receive them, we gotta do a few things. Number one, here's the first thing we gotta do. We gotta submit that word to his word. There's only one difference between a word of God and a prophetic word. You know what the difference is? It's only one difference, the human element. <laughs> People say sometimes, well, I've got a word from God that I feel like I'm supposed to give. Well, if your word from God doesn't align with his word, <laughs> then you need to adjust your word. <laughs> the Bible doesn't adjust, we adjust. God's word actually adjusts us. In fact, let me show you this in scripture for just a second. 1 Corinthians 13. For we know, come on everybody. 
in part, and we prophesy. So the Bible says we see through glass dimly. We, so we're up here, you know, somebody comes to you and tries to give you a word. They're doing it in part. It's, it can't be a full word. You know why it can't be a full word? Because we don't know it all. Is there anybody here in the room who knows and has full understanding, clarity, knows everything, okay? If you do, you're wrong. <laughs> so because of this, we, we, we prophesy in part. What I say is that prophetic words are like a piece of a puzzle. It's not the whole loaf of bread, it's just slices of bread. There are more words that, that have to come in it. So I'll give an example of this. I, I've been in like settings before and not this exact situation. I'm trying to find a way to make this very simple. Where some people, one person might say something and another person might say something else and it seems like those things completely contradict each other. Anybody ever kind of been in that kind of, it's like, so I just feel like you're supposed to wait. The next person's like, I think you're supposed to go, you know? You're like, wow, what do I do? <laughs> you know, you're just kind of doing it. So imagine some person comes and says, you know, I just believe that we're entering into a season of light right now. Like it's just gonna be a season of light. Somebody else comes along and says, I believe that we're gonna be in a season of darkness. <laughs> well, maybe both of those things can actually be true. What, what about in Exodus when the children of Israel and all, all of them, they experienced the ninth plague? What was the ninth plague? It was darkness. Darkness fell over. But where was their light? On the children of Israel. So both darkness came and light came at the same time. So what we have to do is it's like a puzzle. I'm not seeing it all clearly now. God, you need to help me understand this. And every word from God is submitted to the God of the word. The Bible gets to define anything that we think that we get. And I just believe that, that this is even true, that when it comes to prophetic destinies, I think that there's some blessing in our life that is conditional. So someone can prophesy something over you all day life, but if you don't put God first in a specific area, you'll never see that word come to pass. It's like, well, I, I want God to bless my business and I want him to bless this. and I want him to give me this and I, I'm asking for open doors here. Well, if the Lord looks at you and you don't put the Lord first in your finances, oh, come on. It's like you're out of here like showing God he's not first in your life in that area of your life. Let me tell you, thieves don't receive prophetic destinies, okay? Now, thankfully, we live in the era of grace. Come on, everybody. Like, we're covered under the grace of God. But what we're talking about right now are, if I could say it in a word that Bishop Tudor gave me one time, it's you're on the elevator. What we're talking about is the difference between the 28th floor and the 50th floor. Come on. There are different levels of your life that God will move you into based upon your just simple obedience. Well, Dusty, how do I know or how do I fulfill this destiny that, that I know that God has placed on my life? Well, the first thing that you have to do really simply is you have to actually be a student of the word and you have to do what the, the word says in your life, okay? But you don't just stop there because then you have to test. Every word has to be tested. In fact, let me show you 1 Thessalonians for just a second. It says, do not quench the spirit. Now, this is, a, this is New Testament, okay? Do not quench the spirit and do not despise prophecies. Why? Because some people were. Because some people were like, well, that kind of stuff, you know, I'm just not into that. I don't believe that happens today. And here it is. It's, plain as, it's as plain as day for you and I. Like, embrace this stuff. Is some of it misspoken? You know, is, is there a human element to it? Of course. Have I ever gone up to a person, you know, and tried to speak a prophetic word over their life? And there's been a couple of times I walked away and gone, oh, I, I don't know if I did that right. You know, like, honest to God, I've had those kind of moments in my life. And I've actually, a lot of times, if I feel that way, I'll say to the person, you know, I don't know if this word is bearing witness with you. I, I'm not positive, you know, and it's not, but anytime you're going to walk in this gift of prophecy, it's, it's really important that you have a, a real contrite spirit when you do it because it's not about you, all right? So, but look at what it says. Don't quench the spirit. Don't despise prophecies. And then look what it says. Test all things. Hold fast what is good. Abstain from every form of evil. Different verse. Let two or three prophets speak and let the others judge. 
What? Judge a prophecy? Yeah. You want to prophesy? Get ready. Well, well, it came from God. Yeah, but it came through you. (laughs) Prophecy is like, simplest analogy, it's like shooting water into a screen. The water from the Holy Spirit comes, well, you're the vessel. If there's dirt in the screen, when the water comes through the other side of the screen, the water's going to be, it's going to be dirty. Water may be pure, but if the screen is dirty, the water gets dirty. We judge because none of us are infallible. And so we got to judge it. In the first service, I felt really compelled uh, in the prayer portion to pray for a specific couple. And I gave them a word. I'll have to ask them, did that word bear witness with you? If it doesn't bear witness with your soul, then just cast it aside, you know? Just blame the bean burrito I had yesterday, okay? Or whatever you want to. Like, I missed it. And I'm capable of missing it. All of us. Look at the scripture. This is Deuteronomy uh, 13. It says, if there arises among you a prophet or a dreamer of dreams, and he gives you a sign or a wonder, And the sign or wonder comes to pass of which he spoke to you saying, let us go after other gods which you have not known and let us serve them. You shall not listen to the words of that prophet or that dreamer of dreams for the Lord uh, your God is testing you to know whether you love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul. So here's what the scripture's saying. I read it fast because I need need to explain it to you. When someone gives you a word from God and says, this is how you'll know that this word is true. It's gonna rain tomorrow. Well, you got AccuWeather, and there's a 90% chance of rain. You know what I mean? Like, some people will try to manipulate prophetic words and try to tell you, oh, this is, it, it, it's, it's going to come through this sign or this, you know, come to pass. But listen, if it doesn't align with God's word, it is baloney. It's a test, in other words. In other words, the only thing that God confirms is the word of God. I have to test the word someone gives me according to God's word. I have to test the word someone gives me according to God's word. Here's here's the last thing that I'll just put up here today, and this is this, and that that is this, that you have to hold on to your words. You gotta hold on to them, okay? You're going to have to know the Bible, in, over the course of your life. But there's a verse I want you to see in, in 1 Peter. This is chapter one. It says, this charge I commit to you, son Timothy. Now notice this. I'm giving you a charge according to the prophecies that were previously made concerning you. So somebody prophesied over Timothy at some point, whether it was long ago or a short time ago, we don't really know. Then he says this, that by them, you may wage the good warfare. And then he's gonna list two things that are crucial. If you have a word, you gotta have faith, for the word, and you gotta have a good conscience regarding the word, okay? Now look at this. He says some people have rejected that concerning the faith, and as a result, they've, they've suffered shipwreck. Of whom are Hymenius and Alexander, whom I delivered to Satan, that they may not learn to blaspheme. By the way, if you ever are like reading out loud a scripture and you don't know how to say the name, just say it real fast. Everyone will think that you know it and that you're right, okay? <laughs> Works every time. Of whom are Hymenius and Alexander, I don't know if that's right, whom I delivered to Satan, that they, may not, that they may learn not to blaspheme. In other words, Paul's talking. He says, Timothy, you've got these prophetic words and you need to hold on to them as warfare. But the weapons of your warfare are two things. When you have a word, the first thing is faith. You gotta have faith for that word in your life. How many of you have ever been given a word before and you thought to yourself in that moment, that's not gonna happen. I wish that could happen, that's not gonna happen. You gotta have faith for what you feel like the Lord is speaking. But then the second thing that you have to have is a good conscience. Now check this out. You receive faith by receiving a word, but you receive a good conscience by doing the word of God. So they run hand in hand. You gotta do the word of God while you're receiving. So you're getting faith and a good conscience at the same time. And the scripture says that, that there were two young men who rejected the prophecies on their life and as a result of that, they're shipwrecked. Now they can't, in other words, they can't receive the prophecies over their life unless they get on the path. 
And then he goes so far to say, and you know what I did? I delivered them over to Satan. Why would he do that? I delivered them to Satan so that they could get to the point where they know that they need me so that they'll come back. Like, I need them to go, I need to hit them, I need them to hit rock bottom. Like, this is it, I can't do this on my own. I need Jesus in my life. So, apparently, rejecting the spoken word of God is a difficult thing. You gotta hold on to your word. That's what he said to Timothy hold on to it. God spoke it to you. Don't give up. God use me. Stand in the faith that God's gonna use that word that he spoke over your life and have a good conscience by walking out that word. I didn't tell this in the first service. I wanna say this. When Kendra was 15 years old, an evangelist came to their church in DeRitter, right, Louisiana, that time. An evangelist came, called to Kendra, and he prophesied over her. He said, something to the effect of there are going to be two paths in your life that you're going to have the opportunity to choose. One guy is going to be real ugly. The second one's going to be so hot. No, I'm kidding. Had nothing to do with it. He said there are two paths that you're going to choose and, and God is going to allow you to be successful in both. But one of these paths is going to lead you around the world. And you're going to sing and you're going to show people, you're going to show the nations worship. Well, at 21, Kendra is living in Houston. We meet. She moves to Dallas at 22. Her brother, who's here today, gets hired at at Daystar when Kendra is is, uh, 23. And says one day to uh, Joni over at Daystar, says, hey, I've got a sister who sings. Can y'all use any more singers? So why don't you let her come audition? And the last 18 years, Kendra has sang around the world on, on Christian television every week. And that prophetic word that was spoken over her life when she was 15 years old came to pass eight years later as a result. Let me tell you something. You'd say, well, nobody's ever spoken a word over me. Somebody did. It's your heavenly father. But until that destiny comes to pass... The word of God is going to test you. It's going to test you. A few weeks ago, I, I stood down here and I watched Pastor Sherry. She was praying for my nine-year-old daughter. Do you remember this? And I don't even know if Pastor Sherry knew it. She probably did because she knows stuff like that. <laughs> She's a knower. And I, I listened to her prophetically speak over Jaden's life. And Jaden's just nine years old, and Jaden's looking at her with her eyes really wide, not really sure what to do. But Sherry's telling her, it's okay, sweetheart. Those gifts that are in you, God's going to use them for his glory. And I sat there, and I just prayed, Lord, release that prophetic destiny over Jaden's life in the name of Jesus. Now listen, the journey now in Jaden's life is she has to walk out that word. As her parents, we declare that word over her life. We declare it over our family. And so when God gives you a word, you stay in it and you stay faithful and you keep a good conscience and you stay faithful to what God's going to do. So here's what we're going to do over the next few minutes. We are going to begin a process here where we're going to begin to pray for different groups of people, okay? And the reason we're doing this is because we're going to pray to unlock. You saw the scripture, 1 Timothy 4. I believe it's a biblical mandate. We're going to pray for some gifts to be unlocked and activated today. And I wrote down some, some different people groups and I wanted to, I want to have this so that I make sure that I remember all of them. And all we're gonna do is we're just gonna pray for these different people groups and have our elders and some of our pastors, in fact, pastors, I don't care if you're a part of this church or not a part of this church, feel free, you know, to pray for people because it's, it's that eldership, it's that presbytery, it's laying hands on people. And then on Wednesday, we're gonna give some specific words, some public words Uh, that God's going to help us with. Uh, But I want to just pray that God would unlock some gifts today. Is that okay, everybody? Like, we're just going to release this in this place.